Then occurs in cell A in which the neurotransmitter leaves the terminal button and into the synapse. Four events can occur. It can either reuptake, go back to the terminal button, dissipate or flow into the interstitial fluid, metabolize or bind to the binding site of the receptor of the dendrite on cell B, in which a pore opens. Before a pore opens, we are at a resting membrane potential of negative 70 millivolts due to two phases. Osmosis, which is equilibrium concentration gradient, or electrostatic pressure in which opposite charges attract. This, this is when ions transfer. Since sodium wants to get into the cell, two processes, processes occur. A quick depolarization and a quick hyperpolarization. This process is known as EPSP or excitatory postsynaptic potential. During this, Neurotransmitters are all throughout the cell trying to bind to the binding site. This process is known as summation. During summation, we cannot hyperpolarize, so we reach a threshold of excitation at negative 65 millivolts in which charges have accumulated, opening gated channels in the axon hillock. Sodium then finally reaches its equilibrium at plus 55 millivolts in which the voltage gate channels are closed. Hyperpolarization occurs because now sodium has reached its equilibrium. Potassium wants to reach it as well. Potassium reaches its equilibrium at negative 75 millivolts. But because it's not at a resting membrane potential, a quick sodium-potassium pump brings it right back up to negative 70 millivolts. From the threshold of excitation, to the sodium potassium pump, this process is known as action potential. Action potential then causes salutary conduction at which the action potential goes through the nose of brain vapor. As we can see here in time one, there's an action potential in node A, and node B, C, and D is at a resting potential. When we look at time two, node A is at a resting potential, node B is now at an action potential, and node C and D are at resting potentials. And it goes so on and so forth for times three and four. And as you can see, it's like a jumping effect. As the action potential goes through the nose of Van Vera, it finally reaches the vesicle. The vesicle then combines with calcium and exits the cell. This process is known as exocytosis. It can now either go through the interstitial fluid or combine with cell C.